Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel and the fourth video in my series for One Book July 2021. As you already know from the title, I have decided to go disc bound. The primary and most glaring reasons for me choosing the disc bound are the most obvious. Number one, I'm currently not happy with the ring bound and I need a change because I wasn't being productive anymore. And number two, the text block that I already assembled, which I showed in my previous video, won't fit in the usual A5 ring binders. I actually did not arrive at the disc bound uh, decision alone. I had help from a few people. The very first person who brought up the disc bound option is someone who watched my video, specifically this video right here, and left a comment. We had a short discussion here. You can pause the video if you want to read. Another person who suggested this to me is, of course, Nisa Gueco, who I mentioned in part two of this series. She was the same one who mentioned the A5 Slim paper size to me, and I will link her YouTube and Instagram on the description box. She was also very helpful in sharing some links with me where I can purchase metal discs that are not expensive at all. The third person who helped me out in making the decision on discs and paper is Jennifer Mansai. I will link her social media in the description box as well. She's already my friend from a few years back. I met her in the Philippine planner community. She's an artist and also an interior designer. So really, the disc bound was the most logical way to go. The only thing that was holding me back was the cost of the tools that I need to migrate to a different binding system. If I went A5, I only needed to purchase the rigid plastic binder, which costs around 150 pesos, plus shipping of about 65 pesos. I will, I will have a link in the description box. I would not have needed to buy a hole puncher because I already had. And hole puncher for the A5. But, but, I found one slightly used classic Happy Planner puncher on Shopee. It's a shopping app that we use a lot here. It was listed as 1,400 pesos and in perfect working condition. But I actually did not pay 1,400 pesos for it. I have some credits and cashbacks and discount vouchers in that app. And I will not bore you with the details, but the total cost to me of this Happy Planner hole puncher ended up being only 980 pesos all in because I also got free shipping. The brand new costs 1,800 pesos plus shipping. So this one that I got is a decent deal. And if I decide eventually that I do not like the disc bound, this would be easy to sell because I can list it for a lower price. Now, I have been watching so many reviews of this puncher and its function is very limited. It can only punch three sheets of paper or one sheet of card stock. But for the price and the fact that it's available locally, I cannot complain. But it cannot punch plastic and I can foresee that I will be punching plastic because in my previous planner setups in the ring bound, I have already punched plastic envelopes and dividers and such. So I went ahead and purchased this single hole mushroom punch that actually has good reviews and a bunch of videos on YouTube. The general shape and size of the hole is close to the holes punched by the Happy Planner, but with very slight differences that does not affect the functionality of the sheets that you put on your discs. I will show you that later on in this video, and I will also show you how to use this. This one costs 425 pesos on Shopee, but considering all of the discounts and cashbacks, the total cost to me was only 384 pesos. Now come the discs. I will link in the description box this seller that has metal discs for really, really cheap. I purchased a set of 10 aluminum discs in a gray color. The diameter of these is 28 millimeters, which is around one inch, and it costs 318 pesos only as listed. I also threw in one set of plastic covers for the A5 disc bound, already hole punched, from the same seller, 
and it cost 98 pesos but considering all of the discounts i only paid 351 pesos for these two different items now here i am putting on my inserts into the discs i have seen so many people do this on youtube and they make it look so easy but i actually was so afraid of to tear my pages so i was very careful but i ended up not tearing anything at all after a few days, I realized that the 28 millimeter discs were too small for me, so I ordered from the same seller a set of 10 pieces of 32 millimeter silver discs, which were listed as 328 pesos. 32 millimeters converts to more or less 1.25 inches. I actually was hoping that the seller had discs larger than 1.25 inches, but these were the largest that they had with the aluminum discs. Total cost to me, considering all the discounts, was 303 pesos. Just to give you an idea, a set of 11 metal discs available locally under the Happy Planner brand is around 900 pesos to 1,000 pesos, depending on the seller. So these two sets of discs that I got were really so affordable. I suggest you go check out the link to the seller in the description box. Here is a comparison of the size of the gray 28mm discs and the silver 32mm discs. The quality of these two different sets of discs are pretty much the same from what I can see with my eyes and from what I can feel with my hands. They are of good quality. They are very, very smooth. However, these are the only metal discs that I have ever seen in person in my entire life. I have nothing else to compare them to aside from each other. If, and that's a big if, if I do get my hands on metal discs of more popular brands that people are familiar with, I will make a comparison video and I will get back to you. And now that I have put together all of the guts of the planner, more or less, let me show you a few more things that I have cobbled together. Remember the side reminder tabs that I showed you in the previous video? This is how I store them on the planner. I made these little envelopes using the 100 GSM paper that I already had and I hole punched them so that all of the three little envelopes will go into the discs in this order that you can see here. I also pasted samples of the tabs on the outside of the envelope so that when I'm looking for a tab I will know which envelope to take and open. The third envelope at the bottom contains just some pieces of the tracing paper, some leftovers that I plan to use as sticky notes if I ever do find a glue stick that is repositionable. These envelopes are, the, are well, they're not the sturdiest. The holes are already starting to get ratty, but I'll be using these until I find a better alternative that I do not have to buy. Now that I already have the punchers and the discs, I went ahead and made these plastic sleeves. I cut them down from a larger plastic sleeve that I found at an office supply store. This one here is for storing small documents and papers like these document stamps that I have. It is sealed on two sides, the top is open, and I used the single hole puncher to punch out the holes on this one. This one here is sealed on three sides and also sealed at the center to make a partition, but it's open where the holes are punched. This is for my identification cards, like the one here that already have the cards in it. When these are on the discs, the cards do not slide out. On the very rare occasion when I need to take out a card from here, I will just take the plastic sleeve out of the discs, take out the card, show it to the person, put the card back in the sleeve, and put the sleeve back on the discs. It is a little fiddly, but it's the best solution that I can think of for now. I did the resealing of these sleeves myself using my old clunky impulse sealer. <laughs> it was so awkward, but on some of my next videos, I can probably do a demo on how I did these, just for fun. Finally, I went ahead and made these additional layered covers. I used photos from Unsplash once more. I will link the site in the description box. Lots of wonderful high resolution photos on there. The reason for this is because I want to make my planner a transformer planner. A transformer planner is a planner with more than one set of covers that you can flip to transform it into a different planner 
with different front and back covers. The person who came up with that is Whimsy Lindsay Plans around two years ago and I will link her video in the description box. A lot of people used her idea on their own planners and I think it's just great so I'm doing it for mine. To create the covers I went ahead and did those photos on the tracing paper and I got a few sheets of PVC. These cost 9 pesos each and each sheet can make three covers for the A5 Slim. I only have four different main sections in my planner so I made eight covers from the tracing paper using four different images because there's a front and back cover which I will show you later and I need eight PVC covers as well. I just used a cutter and a metal ruler to cut the PVC sheets down to the size I wanted them to be so that they can become covers. And when all of the PVC was cut down I hole punched them all not with a happy planner punch because that cannot punch plastic but with a single hole punch right here. To make sure that I'm starting the hole punching at the right spot I took a, a piece of half sheet that's been hole punched by the happy planner and use that as a template to find out where to punch the first hole. And then for the rest of the holes I simply followed the guy that's on that small black uh, black plastic plate that you can see. You can see here that there is a difference between the hole punched by the single hole punch and the holes punched by the happy planner punch. The single hole punch makes shorter holes than the happy planner punch but it all fits in the end and I will show you later. I did the hole punching this way for all of the PVC sheets and I put the PVC sheets on the right places on the discs when they were all done. So a transformer planner is something you can make if you have multiple covers that you like and want to see several times a day. Here is a tip on how to make a transformer planner. You have to make sure that the front and back cover are facing each other like so on the discs. You do this for each cover on the planner so that when you flip the covers to transform the planner you will always have the matching front and back covers exposed. Here is my planner section which contains the calendars which is a traditional planner so to speak. And here is my section for my goals which I have labeled fly away. The tracing paper got bent on the disc somehow and I just straightened it and put the PVC sheet over it. Here are the subsections inside that section labeled fly away. And here is my section called organizer which contains all the other things that we used to put in our traditional organizers from the 1990s. A bunch of things that are different but we just corral them into one place so we know where to look for them. And then finally here is a section called the unplanned life which is where I put all of the subsections for my YouTube channel and my notebook making business, ideas, orders, lists, things to do and other things like that. And here is a super close look at how the PVC sheet sits over the layered tracing paper. The tracing paper has been hole punched using the happy planner punch while the PVC has been punched using the single hole punch. The stem of the single hole punch is shorter so there is a bit of tracing paper that the PVC does not cover. And that area that is short on that part is the extra length on this part right here. It is scooched over and I actually don't mind that at all. That's fine with me if 99.99% .99 of the text block is punched with a happy planner punch so most of the text block is aligned anyway. I don't mind if the PVC and the plastic sleeves are not perfectly aligned. And I like it a lot, the whole thing. I am pretty pleased with how this turned out. Now let's try to transform this again and appreciate how nice it looks. <laughs> this planner is pretty much set for the most part and it is chunky because I have already put in the daily pages until the first week of August because there is an important event that's going to happen within that week. Over here I have the page for August 3. The date has been penciled in because I haven't yet figured out at this 
point how to put the dates on here. It is the tentative date of my thesis proposal defense, which is the date that my panel prefers. I will be penciling that task in as well on this box that is reserved specially for my university matters and also on the weekly tip-in and I will be taking out the relevant tabs for that day so that I will be reminded that something out of my normal routine is going to happen on that day and will require preparation from me. It will be online on a video conferencing platform because of the pandemic and I just use a glue stick for now to paste that on. The edge of the daily pages, as you can see here, have guides on them where the tabs should go so that they will fall in a straight line and won't cover up each other on the different pages of that week. I really like this so far. I even like the curvature that is formed by the shape of the discs. I like that this is chunky without looking too bulky because it's slim. I like that it's tall and the height is actually a standard paper height, which is a five. I like that I can thin this down and use the smaller discs or chunk it up even more if I can find 1.5 inch discs in the future if I need those. And I especially like the transformer feature for now. I still have some stuff to do with this, so there will be definitely a next video, which I hope you can also join me on. But for now, I would like to thank you for sticking with me until the very end of this video. I hope to see you again in a few days for part five. Thanks for watching. Bye.